Hey guys, welcome back to Now I Know. In this video, we are talking about DNA replication in eukaryotes. Now, in the last video, we have discussed about DNA replication in prokaryotes. In that video, I have uh, talked about all the basic points uh, involved in replication, formation of lagging strand, property of uh, DNA polymerase. So if you are watching this video directly, I would recommend you to go to the previous video and have a look so that this video will become very easy. So I will put the link on the screen for the last video. You can just have a look and come back to this video. Now what is DNA replication? Why is it done? Again we have talked about. So I will start with where it is done in eukaryotes and when it is done. Now eukaryotic DNA is present in the nucleus so the DNA replication is also done in the nucleus. In the prokaryotes if you remember it was in the cytoplasm. Now when is it done? It, it is done in the S phase or synthesis phase of a cell cycle. Alright, now the eukaryotic DNA is much more complex compared to prokaryotic DNA. Also the DNA of eukaryotes is like huge it's like maybe thousand times more than that of a prokaryotic DNA so now if you remember we talked about DNA replication starting at a specific site isn't it it cannot just start haphazardly anywhere in the genome there has to be a specific site that will tag it as the origin of replication where the proteins can come bind and start the replication so origin of replication in case of E. coli was only one right in the circular chromosome there was only one specific site acting as origin of replication we called it as OEC but in the eukaryotes as I said DNA is very very huge you know compared to bacteria it's huge so if it has only one origin of replication site it would take really long time for the whole chromosome for the complete DNA complete genome to be replicated also the DNA polymerase activity in case of eukaryotes is slow compared to prokaryotes that that means it will take so much long time right so to uh, you know overcome this problem what happens is in case of eukaryotic DNA in case of eukaryotic genome we have multiple origin of replication now once again when we say origin of replication that means it's a specific site specific conserved sequence that would be present in the genome throughout the genome it will be present that is called origin of replication now since it's a huge DNA and also polymerase activity is comparatively slow you have multiple uh, origin of replication throughout the genome where replication can start so what is happening in case of eukaryotes replication is occurring in small portion see if you look at here there are three origin of replication shown in this particular region in small patches in small small portion the whole genome is going to get replicated so each of that portion is called replicon alright see look at here we have talked about uh, replication fork also what is replication fork it is moving in bi direction so here is the replication fork moving in both the direction for each origin of replication so this each set is called replicon so there will be many replicons like this throughout the genome which will replicate the DNA alright so there is a specific sequence conserve sequence present in the uh, eukaryotic DNA it will be present throughout the genome so that there can be multiple origin of replication where the replication can initiate so now let's start with the initiation alright so we have this origin of replication if you remember in case of prokaryotes we had OEC to which first DNA A protein came and bound which actually tagged the OEC for other proteins something like that happens in eukaryotes also at the origin of replication the first multi subunit protein comes and bind that is called origin replication complex or ORC okay it's a multi subunit complex made up of six subunit which is called ORC origin recognition complex the word itself says it is recognizing the origin of replication so ORC would first come and bind to this origin of replication site now what is origin of replication once again is a specific conserved sequence 
to which first O or C would come and bind. Once this bind, this would become the attachment site for many other proteins to come and bind. Okay, unless this comes and bind, this is not yet ready to be bound with other proteins. So this is analogous to our DNA protein in prokaryotes. All right. So once ORC is bound, look at this over here. Once ORC is bound to this origin of replication, the next two proteins. Now there will be two proteins which will come and bind, which are very very important to initiate the uh, replication. The first is the activation factor called replication activator protein (RAP). Okay, the term itself says it is the activator protein, followed by replication licensing factor. RLF. Unless this comes and binds to this ORC or the origin of replication, DNA replication cannot initiate. So this whole assembly that you are seeing here, we have the DNA, we have the ORC protein, we have the RAP and RLF. This assembly is called pre-replication complex or pre-RC. So now this becomes the site of initiation. Okay. Now what happens is this DNA is double strand. We need it to be separated, right? We need to uh, separate these two double strands into single strand form so that other proteins and polymerase can come and synthesize the new strand. So in case of uh, prokaryotes, we had seen that helicases. Helicases are the enzyme that can break the hydrogen bonds between double strand DNA and makes it single strand. So DNA B proteins were the helicases in case of prokaryotes. Here the helicases are the MCM protein. All right, that means mini chromosome maintenance. MCM stands for mini chromosome maintenance and there will be set of six MCM protein to be very specific MCM2 to MCM7 would come and bind to this origin of replication as I said it is analogous to DNA B that means MCM are the helicases in case of eukaryotic DNA which will unwound the DNA at replication fork. So if you can see in this green color these are the MCM protein set of 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay set of 6 MCM 2 to MCM 7 it will bind to both the side because it is happening in bi direction right it is occurring in both the directions so one would move in this direction and one would move in the opposite direction separating the uh, double strand so that the polymerase can synthesize the new DNA. Now once this MCM is uh, separating these double strands it can renature right so you need to maintain this single strand form so that is of course done by the single stranded DNA binding protein SSBs and in eukaryotes the SSBs are replication protein A okay RPA acts as single stranded binding protein so these SSBs would bind to this single strands and stabilize it alright so this much was easy I think to understand we have the origin of replication that has to be further more tagged in, in order to start the initiation so now single strands are available for the synthesis new strand synthesis so of course DNA polymerase would come into the picture now in case of eukaryotes there are five different polymerases polymerase alpha beta gamma delta and epsilon out of which gamma is present in mitochondria okay so we'll not talk about it uh, whereas alpha beta delta and epsilon is present in nucleus and in that also beta is involved in DNA repair so again we are not going to talk about that so alpha delta and epsilon are involved in the replication so let's see what happens now you remember we were talking about leading strand and lagging strand leading strand is the ones uh, which goes synthesizes in continuous manner and the lagging strand synthesizes in small fragments or called okazaki fragments and the reason is the polymerase activity of DNA polymerase is always from 5 prime to 3 prime direction if at all you want to understand this mechanism go back to the previous video so now what happens is uh, of course again one more property of DNA polymerase is it cannot directly start the synthesis right it needs a pre-existing information and that is provided by primers okay RNA primers so from where does this RNA primers come over here 
So if you remember we talked about primase enzyme forming the primer in prokaryotes. Similarly here also primase enzyme is synthesizing the RNA primer. But the difference over here is the DNA polymerase alpha is associated with primase. So what happens is this primase is going to form the primer. Okay. And DNA polymerase is attached with this primase which will add few nucleotides after this primer. Okay, It is not going to synthesize the whole uh, strand or the complete Okazaki fragment. It will just add few nucleotides. Something about 20 nucleotides it will add after the primer. So it is something like this. DNA polymerase alpha is associated with the primase. Primase would form the primer and DNA polymerase alpha would add about 20 nucleotides after this primer. Now to this primer along with few nucleotides the next DNA polymerase would add the nucleotides and synthesize the strand. Now the difference over here in case of uh, prokaryotes we saw that polymerase 3 is the main enzyme causing synthesis of a lagging and leading strand. But in case of eukaryotes two main enzymes are involved in the synthesis that is polymerase delta and polymerase epsilon. Polymerase delta will, will synthesize the lagging strand whereas the polymerase epsilon will synthesize the leading strand. Leading strand you know is going to be continuous and there is going to be uh, no problem continuously it will synthesize in 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So epsilon can synthesize the leading strand. When it comes to lagging strand you know that multiple small fragments or the Okazaki fragments will be formed because the DNA polymerase delta has to go in the opposite direction than the replication folks. So it has to work in like back stitching manner we have talked about this complete thing. So DNA polymerase delta would synthesize the lagging strand okay and primer also we have understood along with DNA polymerase alpha the primase enzyme would synthesize the RNA DNA primer. I would say this as RNA DNA primer because there is RNA and some nucleotides also present. So it is RNA DNA primer. So here this is different than prokaryotes right. In prokaryotes it was simple RNA primer here it is RNA DNA primer. Now there is also one more specific property about this DNA polymerase delta and epsilon is that it requires a sliding lamp. Sliding lamp as in a ring kind of a protein which is attached to these polymerase and it will help this polymerase to attach to DNA or stay on the DNA firmly and synthesize the whole strand otherwise it has the tendency to fall off. So a sliding clamp called PCNA which is proliferating cell nuclear antigen okay proliferating cell nuclear antigen simply name because they are found in uh, proliferating cell in huge quantity so it's a ring shaped protein that would be if, if this is my polymerase there will be this PCNA acting as sliding clamp which would help this polymerase to synthesize the whole strand without falling off. So now as the DNA replication fork is moving in both the direction uh, we also know that the DNA ahead of this replication fork produce supercoiling right so that will be removed by topoisomerase enzyme. Okay now once the DNA synthesis has uh, finished you know both these strands are synthesized there are RNA primers that are present in the strand right that needs to be removed we don't need that isn't it. Now in case of prokaryotes primers were removed by polymerase 1. In case of eukaryotes the RNA primers are removed by endonuclease enzyme FLEP endonuclease we call it FEN1 endonuclease okay so it can cleave the primer it can remove the primer from the newly synthesized strands. So once the primers are removed gap will be produced right that will be filled by DNA polymerase delta and this has to be uh, ligate with the next strand so the ligation would be carried out by DNA ligase this is same as the prokaryotic enzyme. So after all this both new strands are ready. Now for the termination part of uh, eukaryotic replication we need to talk about telomere and telomerase enzyme and we have already discussed this in one of the previous videos. So I'll put the link over here. You can go back to that a video which will explain in detail how the telomere region is synthesized and the function of telomerase. So that's all. These are all the um, important points that differ from prokaryotic replication and that are different in eukaryotic replication. So uh, the 
that's all for now i hope this video was helpful do subscribe to the channel for new video every week and i'll see you next time until then keep learning